Hi guys, welcome to my channel. It's me, Andy, and in today's video, I'm going to be discussing flight crew positions inside of an aircraft. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you find this video either entertaining or educational and hopefully choose to stick around by hitting that little subscribe button and joining the cloud crew. Okay, so a few weeks ago, Traveling Black Marie made a video similar to this one, but she was talking about cabin crew member position allocation for Emirates Airlines specifically and for a Boeing 777 specifically. Um, she asked me to do one for South African based airlines and so that's exactly what I'm going to do. In South Africa, the most widely used commercial aircraft is a Boeing 737. I used to work on a 737-800 when I worked at Mango Airlines. So that is pretty much going to be the focus of my video. It'll be mostly based on my experience there and what my friends have told me at their airlines and yeah. So firstly, I thought that it would be a nice fun fact to mention to you guys how the pilot seating works. I know not a lot of people are aware of this. Some of you may know it, but I just thought it was a fun fact that I could include in this video. So basically with the pilots, what happens is the captain or anyone that is the most senior basically will always sit on the left hand side of the plane. So if you're standing right at the back of the plane looking forward, anything on the left hand side will usually be allocated to the person who's more senior because that will also be connected to the actual senior cabin crew member later on in this video. But just for starters, the captain will always be seated on the left hand side seat inside the flight deck and the first officer will always be seated on the right hand side. Also, you will pretty much never find two first officers flying the same plane. There always has to be a captain on board and a first officer. There can be two captains on board and one of them can act as first officer and take on the first officer's duties and responsibilities. And that would usually happen if either rostering just scheduled us that way or maybe if a first officer has just been upgraded to captain and now he is doing his in-flight assessments or in-flight training and so another base another captain who's basically an instructor will be in the flight deck with him and he will take up the first officer's seat and he will do the first officer's duties but at the same time he will be assessing the new captain on how well he is doing his captain duties if that makes sense hope you guys enjoyed that little fun fact now moving on to the cabin crew members basically there is this thing called crew complement which means that there has to be a certain number of cabin crew members for a certain number of seats on an aircraft not passengers but seats on an aircraft so i worked on the 737-800 and that had 186 seats which meant that we needed four cabin crew members because for every 50 seats on an aircraft or part thereof you need one cabin crew member so if there's 50 seats you only need one cabin crew member um if let's say you're working on the erj 190 that has a hundred seats so you would need two cabin crew members on that aircraft so on the boeing 737 we always had four flight attendants on board um that was not only for the crew complement the one to 50 ratio but also because there were four main exit doors we also have four overwing exits in the aircraft but passengers sit next to those that's a story for another day we focus ma mainly on the four cabin doors and each one has to have a cabin crew member next to it so what happens with us in south africa is a little bit different to how it happens at emirates and how it happens in the u.s so let me just explain the doors to you quickly and then i'll tell you how the positions are allocated so once again if you're standing in the back of the aircraft looking forward the door that is closest to the flight deck in the front of the plane on the left hand side will always be known as one left that is usually the door that passengers board through that one or the second one at the back and that one at the back also still on the left hand side is known as two left then on the other sides the one opposite of one left will be one right because it's on the right hand side forward of the aircraft and then at the back the same the one opposite of two left will be known as two right because it is opposite of two left <laughs> so yeah those are the door names one left one right two left two right okay we've got that right so i know that in the states and at emirates the positions are allocated a little bit differently 
Um, go and watch Traveling Black Marie's video so that you know how Emirates ones are allocated. And I know that in America, whoever has been at the company the longest is basically the person who gets to pick what position they want to work first. So if there's four cabin crew members and one has been there for six years, one has been there for four years, and the other two have been there for three years and two years or whatever, then the one who's been there for six years will be the first person who wants to pick what position they want to fly and they'll say oh I actually want to work two right today. They also have specified galley positions in South Africa we don't have that. How the position allocation works in South Africa is that when we meet in the briefing room in the beginning of the day the senior who is always the senior who is always in charge basically in South Africa if you are a senior that basically means the company has opened positions for senior cabin crew members and all the cabin crew who apply, who get through, will be interviewed and then if they uh, are successful with that, then they go through the training, they write exams and they get assessed for the position of senior cabin crew member. And once they have been allocated a senior cabin crew member, that is their forever job title. Basically, they will always fly senior, they will always be the in charge or lead flight attendant on every single flight and that means that they will always be at one left door because one left door is the senior cabin crew member's door. So, in the beginning of the day when we have our briefing, the senior is actually the person who allocates us our flying positions. We don't get to pick, it doesn't matter on seniority or anything like that, it's always up to the senior to pick who is at which door and it will only last for that day basically and then even if you're flying with the same senior the next day they could change what position you're working the next day it's just really up to them so usually as i've said one left will always be the senior two left will usually be the second senior so they'll be the person who's been at the company the longest based on their employee number because if anything were to happen to the actual senior on board or in flight then whoever is at two left would have to take up the senior's duties and act as the senior for the rest of that flight so it always needs to be somebody with majority with basically the most experience out of the rest of the crew And then somebody else will be allocated to right um, and they will sit in the back with two left and then usually one right, the person that has to sit up front next to the senior is usually the newest cabin crew member. They usually haven't been at the company very long, their employee number is usually very low so they usually work up front with the senior just so that the senior can kind of keep an eye on them and guide them in terms of like how the procedures are done and stuff like that. I know with my training flights I was always one right and even after even after I was signed out, majority of my positions were always one right because I was just so new in the company. So now we know that there is a cabin crew member at each door, at one left, at one right, at two left and at two right. So each person basically has their own station. And what I mean by station is that basically the sea, it's, it's basically the area that you have to cover and that you are responsible for throughout the entire flying day. So the senior's main responsibility will be her one left door, the flight deck, so she'll always take care of the pilots, and then the equipment near her jump seat in that area, and then just overseeing whatever else is happening in the cabin and overseeing that the rest of the cabin crew are doing their duties properly. One right will also have a station. One right's station is generally the one right door, the galley, which the senior shares responsibility with and they help them if there's time. Um, there's a toilet there and also they are responsible for the rows 1 to 10 in the cabin. Then whoever is seated at 2 right, then the cabin crew member at 2 right, their station would be the 2 right door, that side of the galley, the equipment around their jump seat and the rows 11 to 21 I believe in the cabin, those rows of seats. Then two left would be responsible again for the two left door, the jump seat, the side of the galley, the equipment around her jump seat and from rows 
22 to 32 I believe inside the cabin so that is the areas that they are responsible for and usually you will find during boarding that they are roughly in that area sometimes two left has to board the plane as well because sometimes the passengers get on at the back door as well so two left will be boarding but then once boarding is over she's got a bunch of responsibilities to do between row 22 and 32 as well so how it works basically during let's say during the day okay we'll get on board and each cabin crew member will do their pre-flight checks on each of their stations and usually that would include stuff like checking the operation of my door if let's say i am one right okay i'm gonna go through each cabin crew member's pre-flight duties basically so if i am one right i will check the operation of my door i will check the emergency equipment in my station um, there's also some emergency equipment above certain rows inside the cabin i would have to check those i would have to check that the toilet works that it's functioning that it's clean all that kind of stuff and then i would have to do my catering checks in the galley the senior would basically help me with majority of those because we share a similar station in terms of the galley and the jump seat but then they would they also have a bunch of other checks that they check like their own door and the flight deck and other stuff then two left will also two left will also check her door check her equipment check her jump seat make sure the jump seat isn't destroyed make sure that the equipment is all working the equipment in her station make sure that there is nothing funky looking in her zone of responsibility her station um, and then the same goes for two right she'll also basically check similar things so what will happen after that is that we'll all check our catering and all our pre-flight checks and everything like that and when we are ready for boarding we take up our stations one left will always be at the door she will be greeting the passengers she'll be checking the boarding passes and somewhat directing them towards their seat one one right will always be at row one or between row one and row ten because that is her zone of responsibility so she will be helping people in that zone actually majority of the time before we start boarding all the other passengers will board the um, special assistance passengers like people in wheelchairs and stuff and usually they will come in through one rights door um, there's like a special passenger service vehicle that comes and it um, parks right next to one right's door and then we kind of just wheel the passengers right in and straight to their seats and usually we bring them in before the other passengers just because we have to brief each and every special assistance passenger so if there is a lady with a baby or somebody who is blind or somebody who um, needs a wheelchair the, those are the type of people that we would have to brief and so although all of them come in through one right's door they are not all respond the, the responsibility of the one right cabin crew member so they will all come in through one right door they all have their boarding passes um usually it's one right that will help them to their seat but if they are in one right's zone of responsibility like if they are seated between row one and row ten then one right will be responsible for them but if they are seated at let's say row 20 then obviously that's two rights responsibility to brief them hopefully that is making sense <laughs> i don't know it seems like a lot of information that i'm telling you guys but alas i shall carry on <laughs> so yeah so we'll board those type of people and brief them before we board all of the rest of the passengers then once we are done with our briefings usually at this time because we are usually not boarding the other passengers during this time the senior will actually come and help one right to brief her passengers if there are multiple passengers that need briefings in one right's zone so that kind of makes it go by a little bit faster and it kind of just you know helps speed things up then once we're sorted with that we bring the other passengers in and everyone is at their station one right will help to seat all of the people in her zone between row one and row ten um, she will brief anybody else that needs to be briefed or continue briefing she will help people with their luggage she will help people find their seat two right will usually be responsible for the overwings because the overwings are usually at like row 16 17 i think and 
to right is responsible for rows 11 to 21 so that falls into her zone so she will also brief people that need to be briefed the overwing exits specifically will always need to be briefed yeah and then also helping passengers with their bags and stuff two left will do pretty much similar to one left and if we are boarding through the back two left will be the one checking the boarding passes and helping to direct the passengers towards their seats and then once everybody has boarded through the back door then two left will go in and do her briefings or just check if anybody needs anything or help with the overhead stowages and stuff like that i, I know that everyone has their own zone of responsibility but in terms of teamwork and just common sense generally if um let's say i'm one right and all of my passengers are briefed helped everyone with their bags and everything like that but i can see that two right is still busy briefing maybe a lady with a baby and she hasn't yet briefed her overwings then it's very easy for me to just go over there and start briefing her overwings because that moves things along we can't close the doors and push back and take off until the overwings are briefed and that kind of stuff is done so usually in terms of teamwork and just you know wanting to help each other out we end up sharing responsibilities um but only if it's needed so usually that's just the teamwork part that i enjoyed about it um but yeah that's pretty much how it works during boarding then once boarding is done the senior cabin crew member will usually make an announcement to say that everyone's on board we'll start to close all the overhead bins if there are any bags that need to be offloaded we will give them to her to be put in the cargo hold but so if two left is done boarding with her door she will close her door up let the senior know that her door is closed the other two doors should already usually be closed um, and then once everything is done, the ground staff are sorted, we're sorted, the bags are sorted. One left, the senior will close her door and then make an announcement for all the, all the cabin crew to arm and cross-check their doors, which we will do. That is just arming and cross-checking our doors is basically just where we arm it to set it up so that if there is any type of an emergency and we open the door, the slide will automatically you know inflate and come out and all that stuff because if we don't arm them then we'll just open the door and the door will just be open and that's it so that's why even before passengers can disembark we have to disarm our doors so that slides aren't deploying when we're just you know trying to disembark passengers normally i'm sorry if you guys can hear any rain it's raining really loudly outside okay so once the doors are armed each cabin crew member needs to take up their positions for the demo the safety demonstration and basically the senior will always be near her intercom in case she needs to to make the actual demo announcement otherwise she will just continue with her paperwork while the rest of us do the demo so one right will be at row one two right will be at row 11 or 12 and two left will be at row 21 somewhere there to do the demo and we will do the demo and then we secure our area of responsibility again so one right will check from row 1 to row 10, 11, whatever, just to make sure that all the passengers have their seat belts on or their chairs are upright, their arm their armrests are down, their the tray tables are up, all that kind of mumbo jumbo. That's what we check in each of our zones. Once that is sorted, uh, two left and two right will go to the back, take up their jump seats and call the senior to say we are secure ready to go ready for takeoff and then and then usually one right and one left are already sitting at their jump seat and once one left gets a call from the back she will call the captain to let the captain know that we are secure for takeoff and then we'll take off now during the flight there's no real it, it doesn't work like i one right will only take care of the passengers at row one to row ten that's not how it works um, with us we used to have an onboard sales service so we, we would be selling stuff to passengers and what will happen in the front is that while one right is setting up the trolley for the service one left the senior will be in the flight deck just giving the pilots like a cup of coffee or something if they want it or their crew meals if they need it and then they'll come out and help one right with the rest of organizing the trolley and then they will go out together to do the to do the service and then in the back basically it's similar 
to left and to right will help each other take out the trolley set it up for the service and then they come out together so how the service will work is that one right and one left will be starting the service from the front of the plane moving towards the back two left and two right will start on the back of the plane moving towards the front and they'll do the service and once they have met in the middle they will let each other know listen all these passengers are sorted we're good to go and then they can turn around and go back to their respective galleys and then one of them whichever cabin crew member feels like it it's not like there is a designated person who has to do this in every flight but it's usually whoever feels like it at that particular flight will take the stripping trolley which is basically the trolley that has a bin in it where we collect everyone's garbage we will go through and you don't really need two people to do that usually just like one person is fine or sometimes the two back cabin crew will do it and then on the next flight the two front cabin crew will do it or however we want to do it usually it just that is usually up to whoever feels like it at that time but usually it's only fair if each person does take a turn so if I stripped the cabin first in the first flight during the day then I probably won't have to do it on the second flight because someone else should do it by then obviously and then once the service is done and once we are descending and the captain has told us to secure the cabin for the landing each person will once again go through their own zone of responsibility so one right again from row 1 to row 10 two right from row 11 to row 21 and two left from row 22 to 32 we'll be checking your own passengers making sure that each passenger has their seat belts on their seat back is upright their armrest is down their tray table up you know that whole shebang we do that all over again for the landing and oh i forgot to mention in the beginning the senior will always wait for the other cabin crew to finish securing their own areas and their own zones and then the senior will go through the cabin again just to double check that everyone like is adhering to the rules and people actually did switch their phones off or that people's chair backs are actually up and stuff like that so yeah they are just the last bit of you know they just do the double check the last little check before the takeoff or before the landing so yeah before the takeoff and for the landing the senior will wait for the other three cabin crew members to finish do checking their zones and securing their zones and then she'll go and do a last walk through to make sure that it actually is secure and then she'll take up the jump seat and once the back calls again to say they are secure and seated and strapped in for landing then the senior will call the captain and let him know of the same thing and then we land and then once we have landed usually both cabin crew members so both one right and one left will stand by the door to say goodbye to the passengers and at the back both two left and two right will stand by the door to greet the passengers and say goodbye and once all the passengers are gone through usually it's two right and two left and um, it's usually two right and one right that will go through the cabin just to do a security check which means they're just checking that nobody left like their phones or their wallets or their whatever any type of personal belongings before the cleaners get on board so that we can quickly rush it to the passengers just in case somebody has forgotten something and then yeah that's pretty much it okay so that is pretty much it that is how our positions are allocated that is what each person in each position does again i am not sure of how it works in every single airline that is based in south africa i'm talking mostly from my experience back at mango and i know that majority of the airlines do work in a similar way so you know you can take that or don't take it whatever it's up to you <laughs> but yeah that's pretty much just how i wanted you guys to know how it works in south africa i really hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you found it entertaining and or educational and if you did please don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss more of my content I'll be seeing you guys on my next video. Thank you so much once again for watching. Please don't forget to spread good vibes and be kind. Bye-bye.